Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the LibTech Retro Ripper. That's right, the Swallowtail from LibTech. This board features Mervyn C3 camber profile, which is basically camber 2.0. So what you have is a slight dipped hinge point between the bindings, and then it's just a flatter, more mellow camber that comes down flattens out before the tip and the tail. This is gonna make it easier to load, but still retain the spring and snap of camber. This board is available in two sizes, 156 and 166. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day with zero winds, colder taps, fresh corduroy, chunder snow, icy snow, fat little ski racers all over the run, and I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. Obviously, full directional flex in this board. So, softer nose progressively stiffening up right in front of that front insert pack all the way back to the tail with very little torsional give. Basically, this board is very stiff from the front foot all the way back. You're going to feel it. There's a lot of power in this board. Now what you're gonna notice is that you get a lot of flap in the nose, but it completely dissipates before it hits the front insert pack, and then it gets very smooth and stable. So this board is damp underfoot, especially when you're charging through rutted out terrain. The only spot that you notice any chatter is in the nose, and once again, you do not feel that underfoot. This board is very smooth sailing, especially at speed. The snap of this board is about what you would expect from something as directional. It pretty much loads off the back foot and what you put into it is what you get. It's not the snappiest board, but then again, it's not designed for that. It's designed for if you need to pop over something or up on something, or if you're sending it off of a cliff drop, it's not for going out and obviously launching off everything in its path. Buttering, don't even bother. I don't care if you find some deep, steep snow, just, just don't do it. Just don't do it. I didn't, you won't, let's just keep it that way. This board takes a little bit more to transition it from toe to heel. There's a little more effort. You've got to put power into it. That's the whole way to ride this board is with power and precision. You need to be calculated with your line. You need to be calculated with how you're gonna carve on it. Yeah, I wish I could have ridden this thing in deep snow. I got it into maybe six to eight inches at times. It slashed really well. But I wanted to see how this thing was actually gonna rip on a groomer and it did exceptionally well. You just need space when you're carving. Those deep aggressive carves, it locks in and it just transitions smoothly and evenly all the way across the run. If you put more power from your back foot into the center of the board to really aggressively flex it, you can get a deep slingshot turn every now and then. It's not something you're gonna do all the time. When you're on heel edge, it locks in, you feel held on, and you can transition smoothly. This board is designed for more wide open terrain and just swooping those turns from side to side. Tight, quick turns, it'll do it, but every now and then it feels a little hooky or fidgety, and you just gotta kinda worry about that when you're riding it. So who's this board for? The free ride hard charging pow guy. I liked this board because of how powerful it is. This is a board you've got to bring your A game, you've got to be dominant with, and you really put a lot of effort into riding it. Do I wish that I could have ridden it in deep ass pow? Oh yeah, hell yeah, because I think this thing would be amazing at sending drops. It's just that stable, but getting it on a groomer and seeing how it actually turns and knowing how it locks in, it's more versatile than you actually think. It's not one of those, oh, it's my only, my deep day, swallowtail power. No, you could ride this on days when you don't get optimal amount of snow and you just want to rip carves with. Overall, this was absolutely a blast to ride. Comparable boards, the Moss Swallow 62, the Snow Fisk Pucker Fisk, the Ride Mountain Pig. This has been my review of the LibTech Retro Rocket. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the reviews we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really wanna support us and help us grow out what we're doing over here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.